everybody, Evan Ag here, and I'm here with a quick uh, tour to get you up and running with the Vue.js WordPress theme starter. Uh, the quick overview of what this is for. So why would you want to use this? There are tons of sort of headless WordPress Vue.js apps out there. Uh, this one's a little different. The whole point of this one is you want to have a single page application that's built on WordPress, but it has to be an actual theme because you don't want to have a separate server um, or a totally separate you know, site set up to, to ingest that WordPress API. You just want it to be in one place um, and a single server. So that's exactly what this is for. So the idea is that you have a the bare minimum WordPress theme and then we have a, a view app that injects itself into that um, index.php. And the, bad, the downside, the thing you need to know before you get into this is that you will lose a lot of the WordPress functionality. Um, you are going to have to think a little bit differently about how you build your application. Basically, you need to think of it as if WordPress is only providing the data to you, and then you are creating an application to display and allow people to interact with that data. So here's how it works. So first, you got to go ahead and copy the uh, path here to clone the repo. And um, I'm not going to do it because I've already done it once before. But the important thing is, is that you need to navigate into the WP content slash themes directory to do this. And so I'm going to go into themes. And as you'll see here, I've already cloned it. So we've got Vue.js WordPress themes starter right here. Awesome. We're good to go. So we're going to CD into that. And what you're probably going to want to do off the bat is run the... Um, the yarn run watch or npm run watch whichever you want to use and that's going to spin up the webpack dev server so as you make code changes they will be visible so we're going to do yarn run watch and everything will build it takes a moment but it's not too bad and the cool thing about this is when you're running in the uh, webpack dev server which is what the watch command triggers on this application um, it's very fast, like it's everything gets saved in memory, so when you're previewing the site, it's darn fast. And what, from what I found, I, there really isn't much change in performance once I build for production. So what happens is, when you run the build command, all of this code that's been stored in memory gets cr turned into actual physical JavaScript and CSS files that then get read just like any other request um, on, an, on your page. So once that builds, you'll have you'll be able to pull up the site and whatever the URL for your WordPress instance is, and this is what you will see. Um, it's important to note that while this is built on top of Bootstrap, it is built on top of Bootstrap View, and the reason for that is if you use normal Bootstrap, you're going to have to bundle jQuery into your project, which it's already included there in case you need it in this case, but it kind of feels dirty. <laughs> I felt. I felt kind of dirty trying to use Bootstrap's normal sprockets for like modals and drop downs and all that stuff. Whenever the whole point of view is that you let state drive those things. And Bootstrap view has been written, it's basically a clone of Bootstrap with all of the jQuery JavaScript bits replaced with view directives. And so it works the same. You've got your drop downs and all this stuff, and all the same classes work. The important thing to note is that while you can use the Bootstrap markup as it is on the Bootstrap website, it's better if you go over to the Bootstrap View website, which is here, and take a look at their documentation because they've actually created view components for all of the normal Bootstrap stuff. So for a quick example, uh, if you're going to create a container and a row and some columns, this is what you want to do. Um, it's up to you what you want to do, but it's kind of cool. I like that this is all built in, in Vue's way of doing things and not having to put jQuery in to do some stuff. So this is what you get out of the box. If you're new to Vue, um, you probably need to know a little bit more information about how to get started. Um, if you're not new to Vue, have fun. Get going. Most of what you're going to need to know, to know, to know, most of what you're going to need is in this source directory right here. Um, the app.js is the main file that sort of loads everything in uh, for the application. Um, and all of the components are in here. So this home page that we're seeing right here is the home.view file. So you can see all the markup for that. And we're importing these widgets that we created basically as just tests to show you what it's capable of. 
um, but you're probably going to get rid of those and replace them with your own. Um, the other important thing is the store. Now, if you're new to Vuex and Vue and all that stuff, store is basically your centralized state of your application. So it keeps track of things like, is there a modal window open? If so, what's the contents of that modal window? Um, it can also be something like uh, it stores the content. Like in our case right now with these widgets, our store actually stores all the post and page data so it's accessible from within the application at a moment's notice. Otherwise, you'd be having to fetch that data live every single time. But our store, which is Vuex, is actually storing that for us um, so we can access it easily. The store is currently using um, a plugin uh, that's called Vuex Local Storage. So it actually creates a snapshot of all the data that it loads on your local storage. So no matter what, you're going to get something in terms of content. But if that content changes, it will get pulled in through the API request and update the local storage based on that content. It's really great because then your application is going to be much faster because you're not having to re-request the same data over and over again. And you always see something instead of just the loading indicator or something like that. So the Vuex store is organized. It uses the module system. Um, the main reason for this is if you've ever written a Vue app that used Vuex, you probably quickly found that your store got messy, super messy, like tons and tons of lines of code and you had to scroll all over the place to find what you're looking for. It's just not fun. So they've added, or they have this module system. And so basically each module here is its own file. Um, and if we look at one, and it's basically it creates a constant for each attribute of the object that it's going to export. So we have one for state, getters, actions, mutations, and then we export this one object with each of those in it, which Vuex knows how to work with those. So you end up with one file per model, essentially is how I look at it. Um, so I've, I've created a few for you to start with, like for categories and pages and posts and stuff like that. But you may need to create new ones based on your application. If you have custom post types, you'll probably have one module for each post type um, because you're gonna be pulling in that data and storing it. So I'll let you look around and get used to that. The important thing to know is if you start creating your own um, you know, models and things like that, you're probably going to be adding new mutation types. And the place you want to go to add those is to the mutation types file. We just map them all back to the mutation types file and it exports the names of all of our mutations. Plus, the cool thing is, is that you have one place to look and see at all the places where you're changing the state of your application. So that's pretty cool. So read the documentation on Vuex. Um, I highly recommend it, um, and it'll make a lot more sense to you. Uh, the other thing that you're going to want to look at is the router. And there's nothing real special here um, other than one small thing I'll point out. So I had a case where I was building a project where I, I needed to be, I wanted to have a page in my app uh, that was mostly generated through Vue, but I needed to be able to pull in content from a specific page ID from WordPress. And so I created this way of doing that. Uh, and I would pass that data as a prop to the component. And then the component itself could do the API request to get the data based on that ID. And so that's, that's here for that, just as a, an example of how you might pass data through the router into the view component so you could load data. So that's the view router setup. Oh, uh, let's see here. Um, this bootstrap file, it is not Twitter bootstrap. This is a bootstrapper that gives you a place to store any sort of, not global variables, but variables you have access to through the window object. And so currently I'm saving like Lodash and jQuery and Axios. So those can be accessed without having to re-import them all over the app. So just be aware of that. So that's it. Um, I do want to cover real quickly the Webpack config. So it uses Laravel Mix, which is basically just a wrapper for Webpack and it makes it a little more, a little less daunting than <laughs> if you've ever tried to set up Webpack, it's, it's a monster. Um, so this makes it a little simpler. And the thing I wanted to point out, you can of course look at the documentation for Laravel Mix, but this is where we're specifying which of the third party or vendor packages should be extracted from our application bundle and separated out into a vendor bundle. And the great thing about this is, let's say you're using you know 20 different vendor libraries for your application. 
Um, if you make one change to your app and all of those vendor libraries are bundled into yours, all of a sudden now when, when you roll out your update and people visit your application again, they're having to re-download and re-cache this giant package. Whereas most of these other libraries aren't going to change that much probably the next time you roll out an update. So that vendor.js file stays um, cached and it doesn't have to reload it again. But your app bundle does get re re reloaded and rebundled or reloaded and cached. So just be aware of that. There are a lot of options. There's some cool things you can do. So have fun. Uh, if you have any questions or issues as you're using uh, the project, let me know. Um, create an issue, create a pull request. I would love to sort of, you know, uh, collaborate on this with people if you have some input. I'm not an expert um, at any of this stuff. This view is something that I just started working on in the last few months, and I just fell in love with it. And WordPress I've been doing for years, 10, 15 years. And so it was like immediately what I thought of was, these two have got to come together. This is going to be amazing. So let me know if you have any questions. Um, yeah, have fun. Happy building.